welcome everybody. Blue. Delta. From YGO Anime Games. So, as promised, we've been building this for a while. Um, we've talked about it since last year when the Yugi Collection came out. But now, thanks to the new cards that came out. And Duel's Pack Rival of the Pharaohs. Yeah, you know, just giving that those little extra cards really is what we wanted to do to push it. We have the first of two decks before the duel this time. Yugi's, Yugi's Ceremonial Battle Deck. An Atem's Ceremonial Battle Deck. But right now we're going to do the deck file for Yugi. Look for Atem's in the duel to come, obviously. Really, really cool, guys. This is so awesome. And let's get to Yugi, little Yugi's first card. See what he picks. So I know they, they made a thing when they were uh, on, the, their decks. on yeah. the way there. So Yugi built his deck first, and Atem kind of went to the corner of Yugi's mind to not know, and then Atem built his deck. So they both had no idea what they were doing. And, um... I mean, the way they built the decks, you know, they really took the deck they had been using pretty much since Battle City when they yeah. revamped it. That deck that changed from season, and they took that deck and split it. So Yuki has the Magnum Warriors, like you can see here. A Tem got the Knights. King's Knight, Queen's Knight, yeah. You know, so it's interesting to see which parts they each chose for their deck. It seems like it, Yugi, the, Yugi had a little of the, like, maybe not so serious, more like fun cards, like Marshmallow he was using. The Magna Warriors, I would say, are not quite as sinister as the Knights. He has, so it's interesting to he see. had Blockman. Yeah, he which is a Lego set. Silent Monsters, which their, their high level forms are kind of badass, but the low level forms are, are really, like, So you see, innocent. with the exception of, like, the Curse of the Dragon. And Grand Aura. Yeah. His cards are very, a little bit more... I almost want to say toy like you. They're not really toys, but you can't get what I'm yeah, saying. Yeah, I think yeah, I think you guys together what, what we're saying. They're not saying. very aggressive looking. Um, things. Not much more needs to be said about the Magnet Warriors. Yeah, we've seen the Magnet Warriors. There's, no. there's some solid monsters. Ever since we were they were in Battle City, they've been a staple. Curse the Dragon. Throwback. It comes, you know, you see it every once in a while. So It's like, interesting because a Tem used Swift Gaia, and uh, you, Lil Yugi had Curse the Dragon. I'll, I'll say Lil Yugi sometimes, just... It's Yugi. We shouldn't say Yugi. At this point, yeah. they were two separate. We're gonna, we're gonna, we're gonna make sure we keep it straight. Even though we've always been referring to them collectively as Yugi, yeah. we're always separating. It. So it's gonna be a Tem, or we'll say Pharaoh, or maybe Yami, because he was originally yeah, Yami any, Yugi. Any of them. Summon Skull. Great. So, again, a lot of times <laughs> the cards came back. Actually, new deck has Karibo. Block Man. Like we said, Legos. Um, this is actually really cool, just because you contribute it. For things that you could potentially tribute, you get Blockman tokens. Yeah. Blue was so happy with this community. Oh, Blue yeah. Blue loves Legos, like, especially Star Wars Legos. Shout yeah, out. this is, yeah, shout out to Star Wars Legos. This was definitely one of, um, I, I really liked it too. It was one of both of my favorite cards. That's why I have it, the it's, I, it's just so cool. I don't know. It just looks it's so cool. really cool because when, you know, you watch the anime, its effect is you get tokens, um, you can get tokens from it for the turn to be on the field. So yeah. the monster split and the piece is remade two tiny tokens. It was just really cool. It's like, yes, see, they took advantage of the, the label. And sadly, Yugi used Blocken um, in the uh, Dawn of the Duel, where he first introduced Marshmallow and the Silent Swordsman and stuff, and they don't make that. But they do make Buster Blader, another classic. And Interestingly, Atem got Dark Magician. Because it's kind of his buddy from the... You know, past. Yeah, and then Yugi got Buster Blader. So no one gets Dark Paladin. Which is probably fair. Ooh, here we go. Yugi's big monster, Gandora. Yeah, Gandora. I, I kind of I messed that up a little bit earlier. I, it's, it's just so insane. I mean, yeah, so this is just like <laughs> Yugi's, Yugi's biggest really threat. It just destroys everything besides it. Sort of like Kaiba's Chaos Emperor Dragon. And then it's attack points for those that are banished. Yeah. However... It's two caveats are that it cannot be special summoned, and when it's summoned, it's destroyed during the end phase. Yeah, but what a what a cool card, guys. Like, really one of my favorite cards Yugi Pilot introduced. I really like everything that Yugi played, though. Like, the silent cards, that. Then we have Green Gadget, which so, was the first gadget Yugi summoned in the duel. And adds to his, again, his kind of more innocent monsters that aren't really this dark, aggressive thing. That was really more the Pharaoh that had that darker thing going. Yeah. Again, then, he just, we just they're throwing Gandora, but it's like yeah, it's, you can you can you can tell a little bit at least to, uh, to us. It that's is what really it seems surprising like. for like a Yugi card to have that one as opposed to you know like Marshmallow. Then Green Gadget fetches Red Gadget, which Yugi use all uh, all their effects except well he just special some Yellow Gadget from his hand. He definitely used Green Gadget to add Red Gadget. I forget if he had Yellow Gadget. Oh, he used Highs of the Brethren to pull out Yellow Gadget. 
either from its Zekiro's hand, I think. Ties the Brethren, another card they sadly don't make. It's okay, Konami. We actually, I actually, I actually now believe that Konami will eventually give us most of the cards. They've been doing a really good job. Like they gave us Rebellion in a Thames deck. They gave us the Magna cards recently, Dark Sanctuary. I actually have a lot of faith now in Konami that we're gonna get a lot of the um, cards that aren't aren't uh, that are existing only in the anime right now. Now, granted, they they usually do alter the effect in some way. Some of them make them more competitive. Some of them make them less competitive. Yeah. So it's a mixed bag. But yeah, I mean, we read them when we feel it's necessary. Yeah. But, so Konami did like Dark Sanctuary fairly accurately. No, that um, was great. That was very down to earth because it has a very out there effect. Yeah, it's hard to replicate. Marshmallow! One of my favorite cards of Yugi. We included two because it was a pretty significant card that he introduced um, as he like played later on, like in Dawn of the Duel and Ceremonial Battle specifically. And then it is Marshmallow and Glasses, so... Plus, like, a 1,000 damage isn't that bad in um, 8,000. Uh, I mean, if we made, like, 2,000, that'd be insane. Yeah. To reflect the fact that 1,000 now, 4,000 in the anime is a lot. So, actually, this duel, this deck, a Thames deck, and then, you know, when we get to Virtual World, Yugi, I'll say it right now. They're all 40-card decks, as opposed to the ones we've had so far for Yugi that yeah, were 50. Yeah, like, Balsy, Awakening Dragons, we've seen play a lot of cards over the Duel's whole Kingdom arc. was also 40, but that's also its own, like, separate special format. It doesn't interact with anything else, really. But of the ones that, we'll, you know, we'll see more cross-compatibility. Yeah, they're 40 cards now, because... And this one, this attempt deck are the only one so far to have duplicates, because... It's it's there's cards from the more or less the entire door on the duel, but they didn't duel very much, and the mo the really the primarily dueled in the ceremony of battle, so there was not a lot of cards to be played. There was a fair amount though. Don't get us wrong, but moving on to Silent Magician level four. So now, for those who don't know, Yugi technically had like Silent Magician, Silent Swordsman level zero, and when he would play them. They would slowly gain attack, um, and every time they gain attack, the card sort of leveled up. And then we would see on Yugi's dual decks that he would actually have a new card with a different picture um, for each of them. But we would see them like sort of evolve when they gain level. Um, obviously, we we don't have cards in the TCG to represent every single level, and it would be crazy to fill a deck with a whole bunch of extraneous level cards like Silent Edition Level 2, Silent Edition Level 3 that we could draw. Because when you watch through the anime, that duel, the monsters level up, but they don't special summon anything. They just, the monster itself evolves without, yeah. you know, switching out any kind of card. Now, granted, they can't do that. It doesn't, you know, look as clean. So they do give us another card to represent the, yeah. you know, the evolution thing. So we have Silent Magician level 8 in addition to the two level 4s. Um, this had the attack of Silent Magician level 5, which Yugi got after 5 turns, or, well, after 5 draws, I was thinking Silent Swordsman, after 5 draws, which is the effect of Silent Magician level 4. So the effect of Silent Magician level 4 is pretty accurate to Yugi Silent Magician, and then we, we just happen to only have one card to represent a different level. Um, this is... This is really confusing, but Konami did basically accurately translate Yugi Sound Magician's effect to Sound Magician level 4. Even if this these are white and Yugi Sound Magician was like red and black. See, that's the most interesting thing is they changed the color of the card. The monster. Yeah, but um, now in regards to this and level and Silent Swordsman, we know Sound Magician. Oh, oh you mean yes, sorry, sorry. We know they just released two new monsters called Silent Swordsman and Silent Magician. And Delta and I debated a long time about this, and we felt strongly about not adding them, despite their relevance to the anime, because even though they each include the effect that the basic one had, and they had the right stats, I mean, they were pretty much spot on, except that they also had... You know, a lot of effects that... Like additional effects, yeah. They could... They had to be tributed by a warrior spellcaster, and then they would pull another silent monster of their respective... Yeah, you know, so you could just, archetype. like, special summon level 8 right away. It was a long debate, but it was it was cards that we felt didn't... Just didn't quite... 
accurately represent the effect that we sort of already get in Silent Magician level 4 and Silent Magician level 3. And we want to make sure we emphasize the level up effect too, that you can start with 4 and get to 8, yeah. not the two new ones, which are already in the more um, uh, adult form, evolved form, whatever. Yeah. So you'll see that we didn't include just Silent Magician, and we didn't include just Silent Swordsman. Silent Swordsman! Level 3. So just like the Magician, we have two copies of the base model. I love like all the words I keep using. Yeah, one copy of the next level up. And now we, we have two higher levels for Silent Swordsman. We only have one for Silent Magician. So we have both level 7 and level 5 included. And, and two of the base model, just to make it... You guys understand what we say when we say the base model, the lowest level, just to make it uh, easier, because you don't want, like, two level 5 and two level 7, and then just have trouble getting them. But yeah, you know, again, this represents um, the, the monsters leveling up. I mean, this was the actual picture of it. It may have been um, Silent Swordsman after three or four turns in the anime, but this was the actual picture of the card from the anime of one of the Silent Swordsmen you know, evolutions that Yuki had. So that's why we feel it's accurate enough to include it. Yeah, the difference is that level 3 does not gain attack during the same Yeah, like, like it did in the anime. He can transform into or, you know, level up into level, level five, 5. Like right away. So it's still thereabouts that it does level up on that turn, except it just becomes a new card. But we're very happy with the way it is using the original cards because they get the level up feel and the power up feel they don't really i don't feel we're missing anything without the two newer ones they're great for the archetype overall to expand on it but for what we're looking for you know we're very content with yeah what we these. have valkyrian which was incredibly relevant in the duel very we summoned so. it and resummoned it um yeah, I mean, it's rarely that we get it off in our duels, but it's been there since Battle City. You guys, you guys know. Wadapon! So, Karibo didn't get played, but Wadapon did. Um, Yugi played this off. I forget what he used to draw, but but he dropped this and then tributed, I'm pretty sure, because they only ever tribute Wadapon. It's all it's ever used for. And Yugi's last monster is Witch of the Black Forest, which is just super good. I mean, you can grab some in Skull and pretty sure off of it. It's 1,200 defense, I think. Yeah. Solid, solid, solid. On to the spells. First off, Card of Sanctity, which both Yugi and Pharaoh played. And Yugi comboed this with um, Silent Magician. To draw, yeah. Which is what gave me the attack boost, which made it into what? Right now is our, what we have is Silent Swords from level 8, the 3500 attack. Yeah, which for him was like level 5 or level 6 or something. Yeah. Um, it's one level per 500 per card. If this is the first thing you're seeing of our channel, we errata card thing, so you can check our errata list in the description down below. So we play it with that glorious anime effect, not the garbage TCG effect. Because granted, I know we gotta balance it because competitive players. Speaking of another card that we, we now have errata Gold Sarcophagus. So, uh, this was quite different than the anime. Yeah, like, very, totally not the same card, but the same card. Instead of being, like, DD Capsule, where you remove a card from your deck and you get it a couple turns later, in the anime, Yugi locks a card away in the Sarcophagus, and... If his opponent should play that card that's locked away... Their copy of the card. Yeah, their copy of that card that's locked away. Its effect is negated or nullified. And this works because Pharaoh used Monster Report to bring back Slifer. And would have won him the duel. But, and again, this was just after, uh, shortly after... Um, you could play card same thing, so Pharaoh had enough cards... And Slifer, yeah, to would have destroyed Yugi, and then Yugi was like, "Well, this has been fun, but I got you." Reveals that he had taken Monster Born several turns earlier, knowing the Pharaoh would have played it, and in doing so, he the Pharaoh's fate. He negates Monster Born. Pharaoh does not get Slifer, and Yugi wins the duel. Now, it'll be interesting to see this in, in our play because if you're against an opponent with a deck and you have no cards in common, you don't really get to use it. But we know what's in other characters' decks, 
So you can say like, oh, I know Kaiba has Pot of Greed. I'm going to lock away Pot of Greed. Now, if he draws it, he won't be able to use it. Yeah. It's so, interesting plays. Now, the one problem is, of course, it costs you your own copy of that yeah. card. Monster Board, Pot of Greed. So it's not exactly a phenomenal card, like the actual effect is, which yeah. this is one of those cards that made it a lot better when they printed it. And it's great for competitive play, you know. Whereas the anime effect can be potentially devastating because you can just shut down someone's like last Keep ditch playing. effort, yeah. like a monster born slifer. But you, it costs you your own card with no guarantee that that effect will come in handy. If you want to think about it, it's sort of like taking out an insurance policy. It may never happen. You might take out your monster born for no reason, but, but you are insured against your opponent playing it. The call, you just have to give up a little something, which is the card itself, you being able to activate it. So, it was, it's it's how you you won. It was his 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 trump at the end that he pulled it out. He shut down the Pharaoh's last, you know, strong play and won the duel. So we wanted to give it that respect of giving it the potentially lesser effect for the sake of it was an important card for this reason. Next up is Magnet Reverse, one of the new cards we got from Rival of Pharaohs. Which is why I really want to push this out now, because we got you know those few key yeah. key cards that were so, significant. And it was cool to see you you expand on the magnet monsters like these don't specifically name you know Alpha Beta Gamma, but you know they were used magnet cards were used with the magnet warriors, so it was cool to see an expansion of that ish archetype. Now they also work on the uh, on, on machines, but we are going to add a magnet reverse. Um, because in the anime, it had to be a monster sent to the graveyard that turn, but it didn't stipulate that it had to be a monster that can't be normal summoned or, or set. set. Yeah. It, in the anime, it would have been anything. He used it on Valkyrian, which does fit the conditions of the card, but we wanted to give it that same freedom. Yeah, that it had so in the speak. anime. It's, it's really not... A big deal, but it makes it more know, accurate. It'll be more helpful to us to get back a lone magnet warrior if needed than just the power play with Valkyria. Marshmallow glasses, which he played in Dawn of the Duel, not in the actual ceremonial battle duel, but I mean, it was a card he used the Marshmallow. Is same arc, you know? It, it's it is Dawn of the Duel, it's the same thing. Uh, so we included one. Uh, good combo with Marshmallow. Your, your opponent can't attack other stuff. It's like jam defender revival jam, and but with very even little better. Spell and trap removal, it makes it hard to get around. Actually, it'd be very hard to get around because you can just destroy marshmallow with the card effect. Sure. Monster born. <laughs> Cards have been in like every character's deck. Pot of greed. And then Yugi's final card, little Yugi got swords of revealing light, which uh, he used on the Pharaoh, and then uh, the Pharaoh turned it around. I think with the card that yes. they don't have. Car. Uh, Pharaoh had some card that reverse swords that we don't have. One of those There's things. a lot of cards that they still don't make from those duels, which is sad, but we'll get them eventually. Fingers fingers crossed. Then moving on to the traps, we have two magicians circle. So you can use this when Pharaoh's Dark Magician Girl attacked. And he used it to pull out Silent Magician. And did a temple out something else? A temple of Dark Magician Girl. Oh. He used it when another spellcaster of attempts attacked. Right, he used it when Dark Magician attacked. There we go. Uh, yeah, good card. But then boosted up said Silent Magician. Yeah, with Carl Saint. And that made it like super, super stronger. Magnet Force, the other nice new card for uh, Yugi. Magnet Force was Yugi's key, key card in defeating the Egyptian gods because Sphere summoned all three of them at the same time. Because of a variety of cards that give him. He summoned Slifer straight up. He attributed for Obelisk prior. And then he attributed for Ra with the knights that he got from his card that let him just summon up monsters. So we did around this card. Because, uh, you know, and some of you may be groaning. And some of you may be cheering. Not that we're always thrilled with eradding cards. And if it wasn't the fact that this card was so um, essential in what it did that the this yeah. effect is slightly different because in the anime you use this card with the magnet warriors and valkyrion and their effect of summoning each other 
that every time he summoned, you know, any one of the bad lists, and again, using taking advantage of Valkyrian's effect to summon all three of them at the same time. Cypher's mouth triggered three times. Magnet Force bounced it back to Slifer and the other god monsters. Yeah. And because that's a mandatory effect, that's not an optional thing, it has to happen. And by using Magnet Reverse to pull back Valkyrion to do it one more time, Slifer slowly wore down each one of the Egyptian gods so they had zero attack and were destroyed by its effect. So, bam. Really important that you can redirect the effect so you can change the target from your monster to an opponent's monster. So if somehow what we are dueling in, one of us gets at all three god monsters and the other one with Yugi's deck has all the magnets, so you can say, aha, I got this. Otherwise, it's, ah, I'm screwed. Yeah. And of course, that play is what impressed Kaiba and he said, all right, <laughs> yeah, so first back. Kaiba was like, there's no way you can beat the Pharaoh. And then Kaiba was like, holy shit, did you just see that? And Kaiba was like, I'm wrong. And everyone else in the group was like, what did Kaiba just say? <laughs> like, I'm so happy that they didn't go unnoticed. Yeah, they were like, they, whoa, Kaiba said he's wrong? And then Yugi beats him, at, he beats Life for a second time, and then Kaiba's like, he beats Life for twice in the same duel? He's like, alright, fine, I'll give up. This guy's king games, so I'm done, I quit. Soul Rope, which so, was... Nothing new here. Yeah, classic. Now, the original printing of this card says when the monster is destroyed, it was reprinted to say destroyed by a battle. We used the original effect because that's how it was in the anime. There's very little... There are very few cards in our character decks that destroy monsters by card effect. Yeah, so, it's rare. You know, we want to have the flexibility of the anime where it's destroyed by, destroyed by battle. is fine. And Yugi's last card to go along with the gadgets... Stronghold the Moving Fortress. Um, the movie's a joke, by the way. Yeah, because that's how Seeker said one of his cool. cards. But anyway, uh, 2,000 defense, pretty solid. But like what Yugi did, if you have the three gadgets, it goes up to 3,000 attack. Um, yeah, really, really cool card. Um, you can actually use it to block his uh, redirected green gadget attack when the fire used Rebellion. But uh, yeah, this is just the, the last card that goes along with the gadgets. I mean, guys, that is Yugi's whole deck. Um, if you guys have some time, rewatch the Ceremonial Battle. It's really, really cool. Also, watch our dual pitting attempts deck versus Yugi's deck. Also, watch our attempt deck. That will all be coming up. I mean, it's just this was the game of all games. This is the end of the series, so it's really cool. We're glad we have these decks. It's exciting stuff. Also, fun fact: if you haven't, if you haven't already. Go YouTube episode, the, the final episode of the series is 224. Go look up go YouTube 224 ending. There's kind of just like two minutes of, that, of uh, the episode that was not translated to the sub. It's really nothing. It was not translated to the dub. Thank you. Sorry. It wasn't translated to the dub. The English version. There's not much there. It just kind of recaps a lot of the characters that we saw, though, kind of like where they are now. And everyone's pretty much doing each other. But Make, you never... We, Weevil, Rex, Mako, Esperoba, my Paradox Brothers. You just, It's like two minutes, and it's just a couple more characters. If you've never seen the original there. Japanese anime, you wouldn't have seen a circle ending. So it's interesting. Because it's along those list of things that were cut out when they brought Yu-Gi-Oh! to America. But, uh, but anyway, guys, yeah, that was, that was Yu-Gi's deck. Like, comment, subscribe, the usual click ads if you love us. Look for the other videos we're coming out with. Why'd you anime games out?